Okay. So um, I want to go to the front view and just like you said, I uh, want to start a polyline and I'll draw the front view of this thing, even though uh, that's, it's not shown in the book, I, I, I can figure out, you know, how tall this thing is, two and a half inches. Um, it's a one and a half. So I'm going to start on the top uh, one and a one and a half inch um, top there and it comes down two and a half inches goes across five I suppose yep five. and comes up uh, two and a half again back over one and a half and then I don't know how deep that is but I bet I could find out somehow um, I don't want to yeah let, how far does that go down it looks like the bottom is three quarters tall right so two and a half minus three quarters looks like that's one and three quarters down yeah and then all the way across and under there so just do that and close right so this is the basic shape yeah so i'll extrude that how deep one and a half most of these parts are one and a half aren't they <laughs> so anyway that that's too bad not too bad Okay, now there's this uh, triangular thing in the middle, right? Put that apart. Okay, so um, there is uh, one thing we could do is draw another triangular, uh, what you call it, um, polyline, right? Um, what if we do, there's a wedge. I mean, the thing's like a wedge in there. Um, I didn't really pay attention to how the wedge is made, so um, maybe I could hover over that and see hover and leave that there. So basically, you just have to um, draw the base of it, right? And your first click is going to be raised, right? So point one, if you look at the, the little screenshot here, uh, if I click somewhere and then I click on the opposite corner, uh, once I do that, and then it'll raise the first click upwards, right? So I want to make sure that my first click is along the back here, right? So I'm just going to click right here and then go to this corner there and then raise up. Well, that didn't look right. <laughs> you know, let me just draw it outside here and see what's going on. Oh, 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 oh. Um, that's because my Z axis is, is sideways, right? So UCS space space and that resets my UCS. Let's go to the wedge now and click, click. Oh, it's, ra it's, it's raising it in the wrong direction. So let's try the opposite way. And then it goes from there to there. Yeah, how am I gonna work that? I don't think I can without rotating it. So, okay, fine. I'll just do it that way. From here to here, and then raise that up. How far is that? Well, it's just 45 degrees, right? So the height of this is gonna be the same as the length um, this way. So if this, um, so a 45 degree angle is like a diagonal of a square. So if I just trace out a square here, it's gotta be one and a half uh, in depth, I guess, and then one and a half in height. So it's just one and a half, right? One and a half there. And uh, really, uh, I don't have to rotate anything. I just pivot it around. I mean, it's kind of backwards, but, and then uh, it's important, uh, not super important actually, because all the edges are kind of, they're, I'm going to union them together anyway. It's just good practice. So just like those. Oh yeah, that does get rid of that that back edge. That that's totally important. I wasn't thinking. Okay, so there I go. Um, so let's lay it out. I want to talk about scale a little bit. So delete that one. Add the base for model space, and I might have to reorient this thing. That might be the back view that I want. Um, so I don't want a bunch of hidden lines across the bottom. So I'm going to say O for orientation and B, A for back, and uh, scale, S for scale, one, yeah, nice and big, there we go, and then there, and then there, yeah, that was correct, 
Oh, and I forgot the um, the corner one, so I can select it, go to projected, and pop it right there. I'll scale that down. Oh, that worked. Okay, so it's laid out nicely. I'll insert my border uh, to fit everything so well. Okay. Um, what I'm seeing, and then you uh, adjust your title and, and all that kind of stuff, but um, when you go to produce the PDF out of, out of it, right, uh, we choose our printer, the PDF to DWG to PDF, right? Um, it's important that we pick the right paper because the regular ANSI paper is too small. So we got to use the full bleed, 11 by eight and a half, and that way it'll be portrait or landscape. Uh, make sure that scales one to one and you have that A size piece of paper. Other than that, um, that should, that ensures anyway that your scale is one to one because I imported my views at one to one. Yeah. And then preview it to make sure it's like what you said. Um, yeah, it's a little off. So let me center it. Can I even center it? Yeah, it doesn't let you center it because you're doing the layout. So you, but you can. Um, so if that preview, so I'm going to inch that up, maybe uh, two tenths uh, up and to the right. Because um, left to right, this border is, uh, is 10.4 and the whole thing's 11, right? So that's 0. 0.6. So I'm going to nudge it, well, 0. 0.25 maybe. In the, and it keeps going to the screen. So in the X, 0. 0.25 inches. And same in the Y, I guess. Well, okay, the Y direction, eight and a half, and the border is 7.8, right? So that's a difference of 0.7. So really, 0.35 would be half of that. So maybe 0.3. Let's preview that. Maybe just a touch too much there. Um, left to right looks pretty close. So, so there you go, see? Um, I would suggest to... Um, Just gonna knock that down just a teeny bit. Yeah, close enough, close enough. Okay, and then um, you can okay that. And, and that ensures that the scale's correct um, and it's centered well and all that kind of stuff. So any questions about that? Oh, uh, don't forget the distance between views thing, right? I don't know what that distance is. So if I make it zero, then I do know what it is. So then I can move it one and a half. So now it's one and a half between views, right? Zero. One and a half. And then it's kind of still um, too close to the border here. It's not really centered well, so I'm just going to kind of select them all and just drag them to where vertically and horizontally it looks good. So um, if you spend a, just a teeny bit of time uh, finessing it nicely like that, it looks pretty good. All right. Is everybody okay with that? Either way. Either way. Yeah. Printed on paper. Awesome. Printed to a PDF, basically, awesomer. Yeah, full bleed, ANSI A full bleed. Yeah, so let, let's go back to that. So DWG to PDF, um, the margins are kind of weird on that. You could play with the margins, actually. You could go to this uh, settings and edit the page's margins. I, I have this ANSI A and then uh, and uh, can't I edit that somehow? Yeah, custom paper size. Oh, no, I don't want custom paper size. I want to mo modify the standard size. And then I go down to ANSI A, probably that one, modify it. And then, you know, see how the margins? 0.67 inches across the bottom and top. That's, you know, 1.44 inches of margin, right? So I don't want that. So, and, and that's a lot of work to dive into that all. Instead, uh, just choose the be better paper. 
right? So these ANSI full bleeds, uh, 11 by eight and a half is, is landscape. So that full bleed A, which is a letter sized piece of paper with smaller margins, right? So there you go. Good question, thanks. Okay. All right, so on page uh, 239, we want to do problem number 17, which is uh, this triangular feature. And um, it becomes, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I'll just go to the right side view. And I could draw the polyline, right? And it's just uh, one and a half in one direction. So this is, you know, pretty straightforward here. And two, uh, two and a half up, and then close. And then uh, pivot around so you can enjoy the extruded part of it. Five, right? So that looks all pretty hunky dory, but um, I got to cut this thing out of it, right? So, um, well, I can just go to the front view and draw a, a, another polyline, I guess. And we'll just draw it across the bottom first and then go to the midpoint and up 30 degrees. That's not 30. That's 30. You go there and close. Right, and pivot around. Not exactly what I want, but um, actually just extrude it through and then subtract it. I should do it, but I don't think I can show you. I was thinking of another way, and I will show you the other way, actually. Uh, Hello. Hey, Danielle. I didn't see you there. Hello. <laughs> uh. So I'm going to do it a slightly different way, so I'm going to back up. I'm going to go to this point where I have just that right side view. And then I'm going to go to the front view and it shows up as a line, which is fine. And I'm going to draw that same right side view here. I'm going to go to this corner though, so I can actually snap to that. Notice how it was separated mm -hmm. before. Not that that's a big deal. So go to five, five across and then 30 degrees again, and then close. Okay. Wow, that didn't. Okay, so I'm going to move this into position just to be a little, so I can zoom in some more. Okay, um, I'm going to extrude both of them, right? So, um, and I can use the snap and then just space and click on the edge. It doesn't look like it's going to do it, but if you click, it does, right? And, uh, and then subtract. Slightly, actually, that wasn't much different. <laughs> good enough, good enough. All right, for this next one, uh, I want to do on page 241. We're going to skip a whole page because all that stuff on page 240, all the parts, is basically just drawing something and extruding it. I mean, you could do like all of them that way almost. In fact, 
obviously one where he couldn't. So we're going to jump over to page 241, and I'm going to do number 31, and then I'll assign you number 32. So this is just an example. You don't have to do number 31, but the assignment is going to be number 32 because it's very similar. Let's say you just do it on your own. So if you want to follow along, that's great. But I'm going to do, I'm going to just draw the front view first, similar to the, just the last one we just did. So polyline, right? I'm, I'm going to extrude this thing, but notice that it, well, it's not just an extruded part, but we can do this the right way, right? So I, I guess it meets in the middle. Yeah, pyramid apex is centered on the base. So if I just draw this four inches to the right, and then I'm just going to type in negative <clears throat> uh, two inches, comma, and then two and a half inches, it'll go left two inches and up two and a half, right? And then I can close it. Right? And then I'm going to go to the right side view. And another polyline, start at the bottom, and it comes out one and a half. And the same sort of thing, right? So half of, uh, so it's going to go negative, half of one and a half, 0.75, and up two and a half again. And then close. There. So now I have, you know, it, it's kind of like this. Um, but here's the magic. Here's where the magic happens. So I'm going to extrude both of these, the length, you know, like this guy gets extruded the length, so I can just use the snap. And then this guy, space bar, right, just hit the space bar and snap it to the end. So this part, this guy here is four inches by an inch and a half, and it's, they're the same height, so it just goes deep an inch and a half. And then this one's, you know, uh, two and a half tall, one and a half over, and then ex it's extruded four inches. Okay. So um, I kind of need both of those. And I don't know if you can here. Maybe if I put it on conceptual, see what's happening here. Um, all I, I would like to just trim off this stuff on the left and right, and um, on trim off the other parts stuff where it doesn't um, intersect, right? And so that's that's exactly what happens here is with um, the intersect tool. This is the only tool of the three main tools that we haven't used. And here's a great example. I don't know how great that is actually, but it's pretty cool. Um, where if I have like this bent piece of metal or whatever, and I can I can draw the bent piece and then draw the top view of it basically and intersect those two shapes together to get the final part. See how the inner, I don't know, is that good enough to show how the intersect tool kind of works? Well, I think it's pretty cool if we just do it. So um, intersect and I just click on both of these and hit space. It's just like joining, but see how it, whatever's not common to both shapes goes away, right? So that's an intersect. And then I'm done. That's it. Now I'm not going to go over laying it out and stuff. Same thing, same, same old, same old. So uh, let's do number 32. Uh, that um, you can do it any way you want, but if you use this intersect tool, it becomes pretty short work. So try that. <laughs> 